officers or former police people. And we, they had people who were, you know, recruiting them. And uh, we, we made like a sort of a research on this issue, survey, I mean, trial, because they, we saw that they couldn't, I mean, in, in Chile nobody can use arms, uh, I mean, long arms, uh, uh, hard arms. Uh, weapons, but the, the 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 armed forces and the police people, and they have been trained. And we did a lot of re investigation about this because we didn't know, think that, that we didn't we didn't want to have like a third force or something paramilitary force or something like that in our country. Second, we we made publicly some statements saying that uh, we didn't believe that was safe because they, this is a private issue. I mean, they went people by people. They recruited, it wasn't that there was a office in Chile, a state office. It was a private issue. They recruited every guy, they paid money. There are some recruiters who gain, gain a lot of money too in this. And that we told them that first of all, this was an individual choice, that it was not safe, and that we did not recommend it. And we couldn't do anything else because in Chile there's freedom to make those sort of, of choices, of decisions. So, um, and there has been some, but most of them have come back because they, they didn't like the experience. You know, they, they gained some money there, but they, 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 didn't, they didn't have a good experience. So most of them came back to Chile. To, I don't know how many there are still there, but the last time I asked about it, there wasn't so many. The Chilean president, Michelle Bachelet, Jeremy Scale. Right. I mean, they, Blackwater started recruiting um, and working with Chileans in, um, in late 2003 as their Iraq contracts really expanded. Um, and in 2004 was really the height of when the Chileans were working for Blackwater. They worked with a Chilean recruiter named Jose uh, Miguel Pizarro Ovalle. Uh, and he had been in Pinochet's military. And actually, I, mean, I have a whole chapter about uh, this, this uh, uh, history in my uh, book. Uh, but he was Blackwater's recruiter, essentially in Chile and, and started his own company and providing uh, guards. He, he also was a, um, an analyst on uh, CNN in Espanol and used to hang out during the war um, in the cafeteria with Wesley Clark. And he told me that he would ask Wesley Clark what he should say uh, when he goes on CNN. And then Clark would tell him something. And he would go on CNN in Espanol and give uh, sort of Wesley Clark's uh, viewpoint, but out of his own uh, mouth. Blackwater has recruited uh, uh, soldiers from Chile, uh, from Colombia. Uh, they paid their Colombian soldiers $30. $34 a day, uh, the Chile, which was about $1,000 a month. The Chileans were paid somewhere in the ballpark of $4,000. But a U.S. operative working for Blackwater right now is making about $600 to $650 uh, a day. So there's a real disparity in pay. When you go down to the bottom, you've got the Colombians at 34, the U.S. soldiers at uh, $650 a day working for Blackwater. Uh, this, though, after the book came out, um, the United Nations Working Group on the Use of Mercenaries started an investigation and actually has been traveling around the world. And they, they um, have been investigating uh, some of the individuals that I talk about in the book, including uh, this uh, Jose Miguel Pizarro Ovalle, who continues to do business with the United States government through his private company, although he's not working for Blackwater. Right now. We want to talk about the future of Blackwater and also the bases here in the United right. States. But first, um, let me play for you a little exchange I had with uh, Barack Obama asking him about Blackwater. He had come to Cooper Union a few months ago to talk about the economy and afterwards in the rope line, I asked him. I'm actually, I'm the one who sponsored the bill that called for the investigation of Blackwater in those folks. We probably we have 140,000 private contractors right there. So unless we want to replace all of uh, or a, a big chunk of those with U.S. troops, we can draw down the contractors faster than we can draw down our troops. So what I want to do is draw. I want them out at the same in the same way that we make sure that we draw out our our own combat troops. All right. I mean, I, well, I mean, I don't I don't want to I don't want to replace those contractors with more U.S. troops because we don't have. Them. That was Barack Obama. This is, uh, this is interesting. I mean, this is one of the more interesting exchanges I've seen with a presidential candidate on this issue. I mean, it almost never gets raised uh, at all. Barack Obama, th this is, this is the, the, the reality about this. Barack Obama understands this issue extremely well. Uh, his, his staff uh, has been on top of this uh, for quite some time. Uh, he, what he said to you is true. He did 
uh, introduced the legislation in the Senate that has become the Democrats' uh, official legislation on these private security companies. And he did it uh, eight months before Nisar Square. So clearly, Barack Obama is someone who has been following this very closely. He understands it very intimately. What's interesting, and you raise this with him, is that he won't take uh, uh, the step toward uh, actually trying to ban these companies. Uh, Representative Jan Schakowsky and Senator Bernie Sanders have put forward legislation called the Stop Outsourcing Security Act uh, in the Congress. And Barack Obama has said he's not going to come on board and support that legislation. Interestingly, when I reported in The Nation that Obama would not support that legislation, which seeks to ban the use of these companies in U.S. war zones, uh, Hillary Clinton, five days before the Texas and Ohio primaries, the, the day my piece comes out, her, she responds by putting a statement on her website saying that she's going to endorse Bernie Sanders' legislation, and she becomes the single most important U.S. political figure to come out for a ban. Now, I'm glad that Hillary Clinton did that, uh, and I look forward to her making this one of her top legislative priorities after the, you know, the, the primary season is over. But on Barack Obama, he's in a very complicated situation because his Iraq plan actually is not a plan to end the occupation of Iraq. It's to continue it uh, with a different label attached to it. And so you hear him there uh, talking about how I don't want to replace contractors with U.S. troops. The reality is, and Barack Obama knows this very well, his Iraq plan could not be implemented if he was against the use of Blackwater or other private security forces. And the reality is, he's probably going to have to use these companies for two to three years at a minimum, unless he makes it an aggressive point of trying to shut them down. He might even have to use Blackwater for the first year of his administration. Jeremy, you also write about Blackwater's newest technological endeavors, including the manufacture of its own armored vehicle, the Grizzly. The Discovery Channel recently had a program highlighting the Grizzly. This is from the show Future Weapons uh, with host Richard Mack, uh, Machowicz, uh, taking a, uh, talking about the Grizzly and featuring Andrew Belong, Blackwater's director of strategy. This is the Grizzly. It's been designed to survive direct fire from a 50 caliber armor piercing round to blast from RPGs and roadside bombs. Built the equipment that we need to safely deliver our teams to the places they need to be. Andrew Belong plays a key role in the ongoing development of the Grizzly platform to withstand the threats posed by today's close combat situations. The current urban threats that we're experiencing now, they come in two phases. First, they'll hit you with an RPG or an IED attack. So the idea is we want to provide a, uh, uh, a resistance to that, and then also to protect against the follow-on attack of a small arms. That's about the Grizzly. That's right. from Discovery Eric Channel. Eric Prince, the, the owner of Blackwater, says that in the future, Blackwater is going to be a full-spectrum operation. That's what he talks about. So they're manufacturing their own armored vehicle, which can go 65 miles an hour. And, and they're trying to get it licensed for use on U.S. highways, which raises questions about what they want to do with these. They're also making a surveillance blimp uh, that could be used uh, by the Department of Homeland Security, for instance, Blackwater says, in monitoring the U.S.-Mexico border. The other thing that's happened is that Blackwater uh, recently was defeated in its attempt to open up uh, a private base in um, in the south of California in a tiny town called Potrero. They were run out of town, basically, by 850 people. Blackwater says that it wasn't because of that. We have 20 seconds. But they, they also are now fighting, and tomorrow there's going to be a decision from a judge in San Diego. Blackwater's trying to open a facility there. They have another one in Illinois. Uh, this is a company, regardless of who's in the White House, that's going to be around for a very, very long time. And I hope to see people uh, tomorrow night at Town Hall in New York at 7 p.m. And you can get tickets at nationinstitute.org. That's right. With Jeremy Scale. Hill will be speaking tomorrow night at Town Hall in New York. Seymour Hirsch, Chris Hedges, Leila Larian, and you can go to our website to link to all of the uh, book tour that Jeremy will be on. Thanks so much, Jeremy, for joining us. That does Thanks, it for sir. our show. Our website, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.